Hello everyone, welcome back. If you remember that uh, in the last class we started discussing about aggregate classification and the gradation of aggregates and we discussed about the maximum density line and how the maximum density line can be produced and uh, how the gradation when varied about the maximum density line looks like. So, today we will continue uh, our discussion on the same topic and we will start discussing about the blending of aggregates. Try to understand it in this way that what happens in plant? If you remember we discussed in plant we have stockpiles. Now, these stockpiles are fractionated which means one stockpile will have let us say aggregates ranging from A to B size only. Another stockpile can have finer aggregates from C to D. So, different stockpiles have different ranges of uh, a narrow sized uh, aggregate, they themselves are not individual gradations which can be directly used in construction or making the mix. So, in plant these stockpiles of different sizes needs to be mixed together or blended together in such a way that we achieve the desired gradation and what is the desired gradation? The one which the highway agency provides us. So, let us say you have plant, you have different stockpiles 1, 2, 3 and 4 or 5 or 1, 2, 3 and these individual stockpiles have their own sieve size distribution is not it. Say you have 3 stockpiles A, B and C. So, stockpile A has this sieve size distribution, B has this sieve size distribution, C has this sieve size distribution. So, all these stockpiles have their own sieve size distributions, but these distributions are not directly used as the final mix is not it. We have to decide that in what proportion should we mix A, B and C such that the resulting gradation satisfies the desired criteria and what is the desired criteria? The criteria is the one which the highway agency is providing us with the upper bound and the lower bound limits alright. So, of course, if if you talk mathematically there can be various ways of mixing A, B and C to meet the band criteria. So, this aggregate band or the gradation band it is an area. So, you can have multiple curves passing through the area which are produced through the same stockpiles, same set of stockpiles, but mixed in different proportions alright. So, again we have another important question here that which is the best combination of A, B and C such that it satisfies the desired criteria. So, there are two question one is in how many ways can I mix A, B and C so that I am within the gradation band and let us say there are 1000 different ways in which I can mix A, B and C and still be within the gradation band then the next question is which is the best solution out of these 1000 number of solutions ok. Now, importantly you have to also note it is also possible that irrespective of any combination of A, B and C you never satisfy the desired gradation. Maybe the stockpiles which you have have some sizes missing which are required in the actual final gradation. In that case what we have to do? We have to change one or two stockpiles so that we have sufficient options available or at least one option available the mixing of which will give us a final gradation which is within the uh, gradation band or the desired gradation band. So, before I tell you about the blending part let us see the blending calculation what do I mean by mixing the stockpiles and what do I mean by the final gradation using the stockpiles. Let us say you have um, these standard sieves here I have taken another gradation having a different set of sieves here ranging from 37.5 to 75 micron. Let us say you have the first stockpile and you did the sieve size analysis of the stockpile, you calculated the percentage passing corresponding to different sieve sizes and you got these values ok. So, I think it has moved little up and down. So, anyways let us say you got these values. Let us say you, uh, you have another stockpile B, B has its own sieve size distribution again you have another stockpile C and C also has its own aggregate distribution. You have stockpile D and D has its own aggregate gradation here 
just to inform you for example, A looks like a coarse aggregate gradation, B is also a coarse aggregate gradation, this is a medium aggregate gradation, a fine aggregate gradation, this is also fine because you can see you have material on the lower side also. So, maybe this is a filler or uh, material uh, you know passing 4.75 mm sieve. Okay. So, now the question is that you have to mix A, B, C and D and let us say the proportion which we have decided is 40 percent A, 5 percent B, 15 percent C and 40 percent D. Now, please remember we have not discussed how to decide this proportion, we are just discussing about the calculation. So, let us say using some process we have decided the proportion of aggregates to be used and these are 40 percent A, 5 percent B, 15 percent of C and 40 percent of D and remember that the summation should always be 100 percent because this is a proportioning which we are doing. By mixing these stockpiles, what will be the percentage passing 37.5? So, 37.5 will be 0 0.4 into 100 plus 0 0.05 into 100 plus 0 0.15 into 100 plus 0 0.4 into 100. Okay. So, I am multiplying individual proportions which I have written here with the corresponding percentage passing that particular sieve. Uh, so, for example, if you want to calculate for let us say this one for 13.2, the combined gradation will be 0 0.4 into 18.99 plus 0 0.05 into 0 plus 0 0.15 into 100 plus 0 0.4 into 100 and so on. So, corresponding to each sieve, I am multiplying the proportion of the stockpile with the corresponding percentage passing that size. All right and I am summing it across different stockpiles. So, I get my percentage passing final blend and this is how I know that what will be the gradation if I mix these stockpiles in this proportion. I change the proportion, the values will change. All right. I change the proportion, the value will change again. So, uh, in this example which I have chosen, this is the graph which is obtained. So, you see you have upper bound, lower bound given by the ministry and this dotted line shows this gradation which means that this proportion which I have selected is good enough uh, to be selected because my gradation falls under the gradation band. But again an important point to note here is that we can have several other combination of proportions. I can have a proportion maybe which will look something like this still within the gradation band, but a different proportion. I can have another proportion say um, which will look something like this all right still within the band. So, now the question is how do you find that which combination will at least satisfy the criteria. So, here comes the question of aggregate proportioning. Now, the common methods that are used for aggregate proportioning which is in what proportion should I mix the stockpile to satisfy uh, my gradation criteria. There are various methods like triangulation, Rothfuch balanced area method, trial and error method, there are least square uh, theories and many more, but usually in practice we mostly use the trial and error method because this is more convenient in nature. With some experience by looking at the individual gradation, we can have a good start of aggregate proportions to see whether the combination is satisfying the criteria. We can use a simple excel sheet and make a simple pre-programmed sheet and just by changing the values, we can see whether the combination or the proportion is satisfying the gradation criteria. But again trial and error method can be too much iterative and most importantly, we will be able to find the combination which satisfies the gradation, but it will not tell us about the number of possible solution which I just explained you in the last slide. Let us say this is through trial and error. So, I was able to achieve, but what about another gradation something like this? What about another gradation something like this? For this what will be that 
uh, proportion of each stockpile which I have to select. So, sometimes the designer might be interested to know how many possible solutions are there with the given stockpiles to arrive at the gradation band, all right? how many possible solutions are actually there. We have recently developed a simple program which is called a simple tool for aggregate blending. I will just try to give you a very brief idea about the theory which is very easy to understand um, which we have used to create the program which will tell us about the total number of integer solutions of mixing the uh, different stockpiles to satisfy the gradation criteria. Here what we do in the background first we create a space of calculations you can say of blending different stockpiles. For example, if you have two stockpiles how many ways you can blend it? You can blend it let us say you can take the first stockpile as 90, the second stockpile as 10, then 1090, you can have 99, 1, 199 and remember I am talking only about integer solutions of blending the stockpiles so that the summation is 100. I am just trying to find in how many possible ways these two stockpiles can be added such that the summation is 100, all right. So, I can create a space for this solution. If we have three stockpiles, of course, the number of solutions will increase. I can have an options like 0, 0, 100, 100, 0, 0, 0, 100, 0, 99, 1, 0 and so on. So many different solutions. So, mathematically it is possible to know how many such solutions are possible. It is basically 100 plus n minus 1 c n minus 1 uh, and you can easily create a program to create this data of solutions based on the number of stockpiles in questions. So, here what we did we created this database for maximum 5 number of stockpiles because beyond 5 number the number of solution is so large that it takes much time for the program to run. Typically the number of stockpiles which are used in practice is always less than or equal to 5. So, we restricted our program to uh, blending up to maximum 5 number of stockpiles. And then uh, you have so many solutions, then you run each solution on the actual gradations of individual stockpile and you see that mixing 90 percent of A and 10 percent of B, uh, what is the value corresponding to each sieve size. And then you compare whether the solution which you are getting falls within the band or not. The next step involves a search algorithm after doing the analysis and then based on the search algorithm you sort the um, solutions which satisfy the gradation brand criteria and these sorted solutions will be the total number of solutions which you are looking for, all right. And then uh, in the same program we also have an option uh, where you can find the solution which is closest to the midpoint gradation, all right. So, here we have just used the least square technique and uh, we have calculated the error for all the solutions and the solution giving the minimum error corresponding to the mid size gradation will again pop up as a separate solution which you can see. The front page when we open the software will look something like this which you are seeing on the right side of the screen. We will be looking at this uh, software once we solve a problem using stab and then I will try to explain uh, different interfaces and different pages which come and how to you know give the inputs to use this software for solving the problem of blending. So, let me first outline this problem for you. So, we are going to see the gradation DBM2 as per Ministry of Road Transport and Highways and let us say that these are the stockpiles which we are using to solve the problem. Here we have 4 stockpiles A, B, C and D. Each stockpile has been separately uh, sieved and the percent passing has been calculated corresponding to different sizes of the sieve and which you see here that these are the sieve sizes which are standard and then uh, corresponding to each sieve size uh, we also have percentage passing, all right. And now uh, for example, you see uh, stockpile A is a coarse stockpile as you can see that below 13.2 uh, we do not have any aggregate passing uh, in this particular stockpile. Uh, similarly, stockpile B is also a coarse stockpile and then C and D are relatively finer stockpiles, okay. And uh, the, the lower bound and the upper bound limits uh, of DBM2 is shown here. 
we will also use this as an input when we are trying to solve the blending problem. Let me very quickly uh, go to the software now. So, I hope you are able to see the folders opening. So, you see that once we open it, we will click on this application files tab, we will just double click it to start the program and this is what you see alright. So, it says simple tool for aggregate blending get solutions in three easy steps. What are these steps? We have to define stockpiles and sieves, we have to enter sieve parameters and corresponding stockpile values and finally, we will get the solution and we will also get something which is called as a best solution which I have already described uh, previously like how this best solution is defined uh, in this particular software. So, just to mention that this software which you are seeing in the present form has been developed by a group of undergraduate students from the civil engineering department of IIT Roorkee. So, now let us start this particular software, we will click on start and it says that you have to first select the sieve gradation. Now, since we have developed this software more specifically for the corresponding to Indian specifications, we already have given certain standard mixtures as an input here, so, so that we do not have to manually enter the lower bound and the upper bound limit again and again. So, uh, these gradations include BC, SMA, DBM, we also have for concrete mixtures PQC, DLC and granular layer we have WMM. So, these are some standard gradations which have been already included here. If you are trying to use STAB for another gradation for another standard gradation or any other gradation, we will select the option other as you are seeing on the screen. Else we will select the option which we have already decided. Uh, in our case, it is uh, DBM 26.5 mm. All right. Number of stockpiles as you already saw is equal to 4. So, we are selecting 4 here. You see that we do not have any option to change the number of sieves as we have selected the standard gradation. So, the number of sieves has been logged here. If you select other, then you will also have an option to input the number of sieves in the standard gradation which you are targeting. Enter the values of sieves. So, here you have two options either you can enter the value of weight of aggregates retained on each sieve in different stockpiles, or you also have an option to just enter the number as percentage passing. In this case, since we have already done the analysis on the individual stockpiles and we have evaluated percent passing as I showed you in the presentation. So, we are selecting here by percentage and then we will move to calculate. Here you see that corresponding to different sieve sizes, the lower bound and the upper bound limit have been fixed because we have selected the standard gradation. And now the option appears that we have to enter the percentage passing corresponding to different sieves in each stockpile. So, let us do that. In stockpile 1, we had the values as 100, 100 again, 71.37, 18.99 and then the finer aggregates are not present in this particular stockpile. Similarly, we will enter the percentage passing for stockpile 2. Now, we move to stockpile 3. Okay, uh, before we move to the next step, let me just tell you what we have done here. We have entered these values which you are seeing on the screen, all right. So, these values we have entered. Okay, let us now go back to the uh, software and let us go to the next step. So, now after entering all the values, we will just click on calculate and you see that the software gives the result in a fraction of seconds 
you see that the number of possible solutions here using these stockpiles uh, counts to 11,626 which means there are 11,626 possible ways of blending stockpile 1, 2, 3 and 4 so that we fall within the gradation band that is within the lower bound and the upper bound limits which you are also seeing graphically the orange line and the blue line indicates the upper bound and the lower bound values uh, and the green line which you are seeing it shows the best solution. Now, this best solution has been defined corresponding to the mid gradation of the standard band. So, this is the solution which is closest to the mid gradation alright and what is that combination stock 28 percent of stockpile 1, 9 percent of stockpile 2, 23 percent from stockpile 3 and 40 percent from stockpile 4. So, if you select this percentage from each stockpile and blend them together you will be able to see the resulting gradation will be the green line which you are seeing on the graph. Here we also have an option of first saving all the solutions. So, you see there is an option save report. So, if you save the report it will generate a .csv file. So, in, in an excel form you will be able to see the solutions and if any designer wish to choose any other solution for this particular example or for the design he will be free to do so. In the filter solution options what we can do we can fix the stockpile and then we can uh, you know uh, see the solutions corresponding to the uh, fixed uh, stockpile. Let us say we want to fix the stockpile 1 to 30 percent okay, and we want to see that what are the other options available. So, we will click filter solutions here. So, I will fix this stockpile 1 to 30 I will just input the value 30 and I will click filter by fixing after we select that we have now 318 options available which means there are 318 possible ways where 30 percent of stockpile 1 can be taken and the percentage of other stockpiles will be varied so that we are within the standard gradation range. And again here you are seeing a best solution again closest to the uh, mid where you see that the solution is 30 percent of stockpile 1, 8 percent stockpile 2, 22 percent stockpile 3 and 40 percent of stockpile 4. I hope that this is very clear to you that how we are using STAB and how we are able to get more information about blending of stockpiles, about fixing uh, some of the stockpiles. It can be a single stockpile or a multiple stockpile and you know uh, we have various options of selecting uh, the uh, blend so that we are able to do the uh, blending. So, we will stop here uh, today and uh, I hope that uh, this lecture was useful for understanding the proportioning of stockpiles and uh, aggregate blending and in the next class we will start discussing about mineralogy of aggregates. Thank you.